Hello, and welcome to the politics of Europe during the Renaissance here on Learning the Social Sciences. So now what we know about the European countries is, yeah, back then, not all of them existed like they do now. Uh, for the Renaissance time period, there is no Germany. There is no United Italy. There is no United United Kingdom. The Netherlands does not exist as, as an independent state. Neither does Belgium and more countries. They just simply don't exist yet. And so the 1500s is going to now be laying down the foundation, these cornerstones for the future nation states of Europe. We're going to be seeing taxation systems coming out and being rethought, or well, maybe they should have been thinking about it a little bit more. Uh, we're going to be seeing the aristocracy and the nobility losing out on power. Um, now, it might take a while, um, but we're starting to see that trend. We're going to see the codification of laws and the creation of courts. We're going to be seeing the increased authority over the clergy and over the church. And of course, we're going to be seeing the breakaway from the church in terms of the nations that go and follow the movement of Martin Luther or eventually in England with the setup of the Anglican church and so on and so forth. We're going to be seeing professional armies start to rise up. No more are we going to be relying on the nobility to come and usher up and bring an army when needed. And we're going to be employing government officials and having official councils and committees and other things. So we are going to be seeing a new form of government emerging. Now, France itself is a nation that at the end of uh, 1453, uh, after the end of the Hundred Years' War, is truly starting to see itself as a unified nation like it hadn't before. Before, if I would say, hi, where are you from? And you're speaking to somebody from France, they might actually say, hi, I'm from Burgundy. I'm from Champagne. I'm from Normandy. They might not say France because they are looking more to their locality than they are their entire overarching nation. Um, and now what the Hundred Years War does is it starts to bring this concept of being French back into it. Now, with that, after the Hundred Years War, we're going to see the reign of King Louis XI, who's going to make laws in terms of taxes um, and codifying everything, following those steps that you have to do to build yourself up as a nation. He's going to be having royal control over the judicial system, and he's going to start creating an effective army because, hey, you just did a hundred years war. I mean, you, you kind of probably need a good military. Um, it's going to be needed. Um, and he is also known as kind of the spider king for the webs of political and diplomatic intrigue that he leads uh, during his reign. In terms of Spain, they're going to be unified. Of course, uh, we have the marriage of Isabella of Castile and Ferdinand of Aragon. Now, they do rule their country separately during their lifetimes, but the stage is set for the unification of Spain because guess what? Their heirs are going to be bringing it together. Um, and eventually we're going to be seeing that. But we also, during the time of Isabella and um, Ferdinand, is we're going to be seeing the Spanish Inquisition. We're going to be seeing um, the Muslims and the Moors finally defeated in their last stronghold hold of Granada. Um, of course, uh, Spain the area of Spain, the Iberian Peninsula, was under Muslim control for centuries upon centuries, and a long war is fought to drive um, them out, and that happens finally 1492, uh, where Granada falls, and also then Isabella and uh, Ferdinand expel anybody who is Jewish or Muslim from Spain, or they say you can stay, but you got to convert. But these con conversions were not always trusted. And so then we usher in that Spanish Inquisition, where they are really going to test you to see um, if you are a good and true Catholic. Unfortunately, it kind of goes off the rails and goes way too far, way too deep, and a whole bunch of people are tortured and killed unnecessarily. Um, but yeah, that's just one of those sad points in history. Um, in terms of Spain, they are going to be passing on into the Habsburg dynasty um, because Ferdinand and Isabella, they had their daughter, um, Princess um, Joanna, Mary Philip the F uh, Fair, um, who is a Habsburg, and their son is going to become King Charles I 
of Spain. Uh, he is also going to have to maintain the Holy Roman Empire at the same time because he's also going to become Emperor Charles V of the Holy Roman Empire. So he's got a lot, a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. Uh, now, in terms of Spain under Charles, uh, you know, he demanded a whole bunch of taxes to pay for wars abroad um, as he went out and kind of built his power base and fought against France um, and in various locations. Um, now, they also arranged their son to be married to uh, Mary Tudor. Uh, his son Philip um, trying to build alliances there with England and we're going to find out what happens with that later um, but a lot of things happens during the reign of Charles we have the exploration and the conquering of the Americas uh, under Spain uh, in their territories we have the reformation starting in northern europe and at some point charles just abdicates his throne in 1558 and he divides the habsburgs land into two he gives his son who will be king philip ii spain netherlands naples and sicily and his brother Ferdinand. he gives the holy roman empire just to try to make things easier in terms of england they also are coming out from the hundred years war um, and with them um, the aristocracy got stronger during the Hundred Years' War because they were paying for the war. Uh, and these families were amassing their own armies. And so with this, we have a civil war break out. Uh, from 1455 to 1485, we have flowers fighting it out. We have the War of the Roses, the House of York represented by the White Rose versus the House of Lancaster represented by the Red Rose. And I don't have time to go into all the details here, but there's a lot of great videos on it here on YouTube. Um, but we have it ending with um, the defeat of Richard III, who is somebody who took over um, and started to reign when he yeah, had his nephews killed. Um, so when he is finally, um, defeated and they find his body much, much later here, actually recently under a parking lot in England, um, we have the establishment of the Tudor family, um, coming in and they are going to be reigning now here for some time in England until, uh, the death of Elizabeth. So, yeah. Also, if you're somebody that has ever watched um, the Game of Thrones, then you probably have some base on the War of the Roses. Now, when Henry VII comes in, the first of the Tudor kings, he restored the authority of the king. And he goes and gets rid of those private armies of the nobility. He's like, yeah, we can't have that or this war is going to just like explode out again here. Um, and he does all he can to make sure that wars are not going to happen. And he also does the things that he needs to do to establish that base of the government. Having traditional taxes such as crown lands. He goes and does judicial fees and fines. He has custom duties. And he goes and tries to balance the budget. Why? Because then you don't have to go also ask the aristocracy for more money and you just don't want to do that. Um, now, the power of parliament declined as his needs to call them for taxes also declined. If you balance your budget and if you just kind of do your own thing, you don't need to talk to parliament and it's all good. So, you know, just stay with that. In terms of the end of the Italian Renaissance, well, there's going to be numerous compounding um, reasons. But first, we have the Ottoman Turks conquering Constantinople in 1453. A lot happens in 1453, um, but it is um, done and over with there, um, which does ruin some of the commercial base um, that Italy has. Um, however, they're really kind of building their own, but they're having now outside competition. The French and the Dutch have really jumped in in silk production, wool production, and other things, and their fleets are now zigzagging all over the place. We have a new world economy coming in with Spain and Portugal going out and finding the um, Americas from a European perspective. I'm saying from a European perspective because the Americas were always there, and everybody on the Americas knew they were there. Um, but for the Portuguese and the Spanish, they are now going and conquering the Aztec, the Inca, and then later on, others are going to be coming, the French and the British, and establishing their own colonies over in the Americas. Um, unfortunately for Italy, they're going to become a battleground area for these new building up countries like France and Spain. 
who are going to be fighting in the Italian wars now for years upon years, uh, starting with the invasion of France in 1494. And if you remember, that coincides with the Medici negotiation uh, for um, Florence with Savonarola. Um, anyway, we're going to have an anti-French coalition build, including the Spanish and the Holy Roman Empire coming together to defeat them. Um, however, along the way, the Holy Roman Empire troops are going to sack Rome and things aren't going to be good. We have popes running around, uh, fearful of getting captured and then getting captured. And simply put, the Italian Renaissance is going to be coming to an end. And slowly but surely, things are going to shift from Italy in the south up towards the new uh north in terms of new expressions new items coming out and we're also going to be seeing that when we jump into the scientific revolution when we get there um so yeah um, anyway, the French are going to be conquering and maintaining Milan until 1512. There's going to be 15 years of fighting in Italy. And that Italian alliance that uh, Machiavelli wanted to see never happens. And so they're too weak to fight against the other people coming at them. And yeah, their renaissance comes to an end. And with that comes to an end our lecture series on the Renaissance. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.